Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Anime Soiree. Today, this week, we are covering Fire Force. I, myself, am Will. With me are Kyle and Griffin. And Fire Force, I liked it. It's uh, it's a, it's a, it was a pretty pretty solid show both seasons. Uh, just to give a quick rundown of the plot, it follows Shinra Kusakabe, who is a third generation pyrokinetic, which are people that have fire based powers, in this semi post apocalyptic alternate future kind of world where most of the world has been consumed by fire, except for many little small bastions, including Tokyo, where it takes place. And there are many people that have pyrokinesis, where they can control fire, and they many of them go and work in the fire force, which aims to stop uh, people from bursting in flames, which is a common occurrence in this, turning into infernals and setting fires. So yeah, the uh, uh, Shinra is he starts off the show as like a new new recruit. Stopping these infernals and uh, it all devolves from there. But uh, I uh, I I liked it. Pretty good. What do you guys think? Yeah, I also liked it. <laughs> I mean, I thought what really sets this apart from like All other right. shonen, but <laughs> I think what sets this apart is like the like. I think that this this show just has a lot of style. That's kind of like what like attracted me to it because I, I feel like the the story is not particularly like unique or like all that interesting, but like. I feel like the all of the characters, like I, I love their like I mean I, I really like all the character like designs and just like the like the the setting of the show is like has a lot of has a lot of character, has a lot of like soul to it. And um yeah, I mean I feel like all of the all of the characters have kind of like they're not like super deep or anything, but they have these kind of like quirky attitudes that like makes you understand them all pretty well. And um they're they're pretty pretty enjoyable to just like watch and like I like how all the characters kind of have like powers that kind of fits their personalities and stuff. So yeah, just like a lot of like, a lot of like good good shonen shit in this, which I yeah I uh, I agree. Good shonen shit is a strong way to put it. Um, I think that some of its rivals in this space would be like Black Col Black Clover, which I I haven't seen a lot of, but I saw enough of like My Hero Academia and Demon Slayer and in this show or kind of all in the same avenue of you know shonen um or at least contemporary shonen and honestly fire force i feel mm -hmm. like is one of the stronger of the bunch and one of the most obvious things that stands out to me is definitely the art style and animation is like it rivals yeah. demon slayer and that's saying a lot because demon slayer um definitely has some of the the coolest looking moments in anime but i'd say fire force is way more consistent because i know demon slayer had some strange cgi a couple times but uh in this show there's yeah never a lapse in uh the the art and the animation it always looks good and uh i like the commitment to character development feels like every character if it wasn't fleshed out right away it eventually does get or the character does get fleshed out when they become more relevant to the plot i even liked that scene at the end of season two where they went back to the nether and then like three random dudes from uh unit two they like developed them for like 20 seconds and then they just immediately died yeah, <laughs> uh, that was yeah like, it was like <laughs> it was like one yeah. guy was like oh my wife my kids like, and the last guy's like my shoe i gotta show people my shoes well, yeah. <laughs> and then you think yeah. he lives and he dies so i funny. i I really like the. I was like really shocked when they were like they had the guy that was like he could like see through things, and I was like, oh, this guy's cool power. Like he's got to be like this is important. Like they're gonna use him to get to the Nether because like this is a really cool power. And then like the scene after that, he just gets his head shot, and I was like, what the fuck? Holy yeah, shit, he's fucking dead now. <laughs> he's this guy's dead. Yeah, he seemed like a cool dude, um, and um, yeah. I was waiting for someone to yeah, die because not mean, a lot of uh, no one in Unit Eight dies throughout season two. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> i think yeah, it's so. really yeah it doesn't really uh, like i don't know i kind of feel like that that's like um it, it kind of has like a dark tinge to it like in like the setting and like the premise that like the the people are, are just like randomly combusting and turning into the infernals and there's like no way to save them they just have to kill them um but you know i kind of i feel like with like shows where it's like this is like one of those shows where you know that like 
there aren't going to be very many character deaths. It, like, and if there is, it's going to be like a series changing moment, you know? Yeah. I feel like that's like kind of how like most like shonen are. It's or just I feel like that's just kind of how most shows are. Like, mo- like yeah. you you kind of just don't count on there being like character deaths unless like the show goes out of its way, like Attack on Titan at the beginning to like make it clear that like people fucking die all the time in this setting. But yeah. that's not really the case here because. You know, the, the people in the fire force are like they're they're very competent, you know, like they're they've been training for this. Um, and, uh, you know, the fire force is like the best of the best selected from yeah. like the military uh, firefighters. That was, and stuff. that was one thing I really liked, um, just like at the very beginning of the show. And I guess we can kind of transition this into talking about Shinra as a main character. Like, mm-hmm. I really liked how the first episode when Shinra first gets introduced, like he's already competent with his fire powers, like. It was super yeah. cool just to, like because a lot of the times like the shonen starts with them like getting these powers or something and then they develop them throughout where when we meet Shinra like he's on his way to join the fire force and it's not like he was just found and they're like oh you'd be good for our team or whatever and he has to like learn how to use his powers he already knows how to use his powers he like saves I think he saves Iris from falling something falling and then he gets to develop them further on later, of course. But yeah, I thought that was yeah. a pretty interesting. I mean, I think I've seen it maybe one or once or twice before, but like, I think that's a very interesting take, and it it definitely makes me more interested in the show when they already say, okay, we're not going to show you him learning how to become Jetman and mm-hmm. uh, use his feet to kick people. We're just going to show you like straight up, this is the power that he has, and this is how he's going to use it, and we're going to build off that i I really like that yeah it's kind of it kind of reminds me of like luffy from one piece uh no no one piece please please, thank you (laughs) but also but but luffy like you get the 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 childhood stuff at the very beginning so like that's That's true without power there is a little bit more yeah Yeah. and then then it kind of jumps and you you do get that but yeah i I that's just one chapter yeah 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 and I do like that it's like, you know, he's not hyper competent, like he's not overpowered. Uh, yeah. Like there still are like like training episodes where he like gets new abilities and stuff, um, which is like, I feel like that's just part of the shonen formula. And like, that's like part of the most appealing part is like seeing characters grow and like um, achieve new things. And, and, the, um, yeah. and the one time he does get a shortcut, it makes a lot of sense with the Adola link with his brother. That was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I I think uh, I think that was probably my favorite like power up for him. Overall, I thought I personally felt like some of the power ups for the characters were a bit fast for me. Like it seems like it was just like it was like a one episode thing, and like even in universe, that one episode was like less than a week usually. And it was like mm-hmm. him training with uh, uh, Shinmon, Captain Shinmon a bit. Yeah, I think it happens twice: once in season one, yeah. once in season two, and it just for me at least it seems kind of fast but also i understood why they they didn't want to spend too much time on it um one thing i also didn't like was that tamaki like <laughs> i don't, I don't know gonna they kind of intru- they kind of introduced her as like uh a strong character because she like charges <laughs> in with shinra like in that like uh training thing and she like tries yeah. to fight that person and then after that we just don't see her fight like ever literally like, ever yeah and then very end of season two and i think it's probably like because they're basing it off a of manga right now and i think the manga is it's got quite a few more chapters so i think there's gonna be two yeah. or three more seasons so i think tamaki will have more fight scenes but you don't get to see Tamaki fight and like power up till the end of season yeah. two. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. And, and it's like, After- even then, even then she doesn't get like the same attention as like, yeah. um, as, uh, Shinra and like Arthur, because yeah. like Benny Maru, when like she comes with them to like train, he's like, okay, but like, you're not really going to train with me because you're not. A okay. Well, right. it's not like yeah. they could have so, her like, participate like- in like what, <laughs> what Shinra and Arthur were doing. I feel well, I yeah, know I feel like that would be too much fan service. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean that that's I don't know. That's just, the problem with her character is that she is just fan service. Like, don't get me wrong, like it's like pretty funny, but at the same time, it's like I wish that there was like that yeah. there was that funny gimmick attached well, to Well, it like, seems like she might she develop yeah. into another character. 
I, I, right, yeah, but I, I mean, it's I know, but there's episodes, so many you know? other like, characters. I like, like, I almost want to give him a pass just because there is so many other characters no, with so much no, development. That... No, I don't even like think that <laughs> because, like, at no, that I point, it's, at that point, like, why not just like not have that character until you're ready to like uh, have her? So like, we can have fan service for the like, whole. Like, she literally serves to be. I know exactly, service. but like. <laughs> But but then it's like why not just like get, make no no I, I I'm I'm I, I like see, it's like literally just for like a one off thing and it's like there's just there's just not that much depth to her yeah to her she character. serves as she serves as like fan service and like comedic relief for most of the time yeah and then like literally they're like oh shit we need Iris is in a different scene right now we need somebody to say the prayer okay mm, fine, yeah <laughs> get him dude uh, yeah <laughs> and like yeah. I don't know I just I liked her as a character she was kind of like she's a likable character but like at the same time she doesn't do anything all, all the time and i really liked her scene in season two with juggernaut that fight scene was so yeah. fucking cool had seen juggernaut that was cool move, move holy shit that was cool and that that was yeah. like pretty moving between the two like i didn't really feel anything between. well it people. is nice that that's kind of like the source of her desire to get stronger yeah um, it's super cool like she sees juggernaut yeah. like defend her and like in the season one she has uh sheena defend her and like she's like, okay, I don't need people defending me anymore. Like, yeah, I want to do this myself, which is a good. That's a good motivation. And if we're on the, yeah, but at the same time, she could have had that. Mo she could have had that realization in season yeah. one, and then she might have like been a more developed character, like the entire show. And she could still be the funny, like fancy. Yeah, character. I feel like it would have made sense so, to have yeah. that right after. Um, geez, the guy with the star eyes. Uh, I don't know his name. Yeah, yeah, Rekka. Rekka. Like she could have had name. that moment with yeah. Rekka. But before we jump to something else, I just wanted yeah. to say. Like one of my favorite scenes in the show was like the Tamaki like assault, uh, like quick little like intro, where it was like assault was like, all right, I've been training like all these months to to face Tamaki again. Oh, oh yeah, that was pretty <laughs> and funny. then like it just you know like her. Oh yeah, that was her, a like, pretty, that was. But like again, Dude, that's but, like it so really funny. Funny. but it was so funny. But it was yeah, so no, it doesn't funny. make her a good character, oh, yeah. but it's still really fun. I agree. It's just really like funny. her, just like exposing yeah. herself to him, and then him just like passing out <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> and like his progression and like his training and he's like porn wasn't enough i have to yeah, go interact with the real woman <laughs> oh my god so funny and like the stripper too was like really funny she was like saying all the classic like stripper lines and he like took it to heart she was like saying like i could tell that yeah. you're from the other guys here and then after he's like wow i guess i'm really good at talking to women i had no idea I just thought <laughs> yeah. top top to bottom that scene was fucking hilarious, and they like frame him yeah. as like this yeah, ultra badass sure. too. Oh my god, so funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah, Tamaki definitely of Section Eight, probably the weakest character, but like there's room to grow. Like no, no doubt. I mean, like, honestly, I don't think she bothered me as much as she did you guys, just because of like how much ground there was yeah. to cover. But yeah, it did seem strange that to have such an early introduction and then like 40 episodes later spend the time to properly develop then beyond, hey, I get naked sometimes on accident. Ooh, whoopsie. <laughs> yeah. But uh, well, I guess just real quick, the fan service in the show is pretty nuts. And um, I think, Kyle, you made a pretty <laughs> good point um, because, you know, we were talking about My Hero Academia and fire force briefly and you were saying like you know i could see why fire force doesn't have such a big f fan base just because of things like that that fan service are kind of a deterrent to like a more general audience and uh, like, i think it's yeah. a good point because it is pretty extreme i did respect though at the, the end of season two where it was basically like uh shinra and arthur fan service where they were getting tortured the whole time and they were just in their thong i was like okay yeah <laughs> they got both sides respect and then benny maru is kind of like male fan service too <laughs> oh dude yeah like you just know like i don't even i have not even looked at a single like popularity poll for this show but i you know that benny maru is like near the top in like every single poll like there's no doubt in my mind he just like was... he just is that character that like fills that need. he's like he's like the edgy anime character but like something i really yeah. liked uh did you you watch the sub right uh kyle i watched the sub yeah okay great. i watched, watched the, the dub, dub until right? i couldn't anymore yeah, yeah until until you couldn't um something i really noticed going from the dub to the sub was that like i noticed a lot of the edgy anime characters like levi and stuff like they have like the same kind of voice and it just sounds like they're always pissed off and like 
they're not approachable at all. But Benny Mara's like dub voice, like he said, it just sounded yeah. like a chill guy. He was like kind of edgy, but like also just like he seemed relatively approachable. He seemed like a nice guy, which like I really liked. And it made me like not get the same vibe that I got from every other edgy anime like overpowered character, which I, I like the dub a lot. A but then he switched to the dub. Yeah, the dub was really good. I think uh, I posted a. There are some really funny voice acting performances, but like Rekka's voice actor is really fucking funny. I loved his voice actor. He just went all out. He sounded like a borderline yeah, yeah. psycho at some That's point. Point. It was really funny. Um, and like uh, Shinra's voice actor was fucking good. Like, I think I've heard him voice before. Actor for Shinra. I don't. I thought that, I. I think I heard like this is his first main. Like, Seriously. Role as a voice actor, like, like as a main character, I think he's done like side characters before. Um. He's Before really we dive show. completely off the fan service thing, I want one more thing I wanted to touch on, and that was that like every woman yeah. just like sips for Shinra like unconditionally, and like I get yeah. he's the MC, <laughs> yeah. but like you know like Hibana and Iris and like Tamaki and Maki, I mean maybe not so much Maki, but like yeah, not I don't so think much. Maki does this. Much. I mean I think Hibana yeah. is the most it, it, is the most heinous, Hibana, yeah. like because. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's like, it's not even like veiled. She's just like, I want yeah. Shinra. And then like, yeah, yeah. Iris, it's like, I think Shinra has a crush on Irish. And then I think Tamaki just like gets into her situations with Shinra. Anyway, it's a lot. It's a yeah, lot. yeah. Dude, imagine having Hibana simp for you. Like, oh I yeah, dude. Shinra. Can we talk about like her whole <laughs> dynamic real quick? Like her just like stepping on gravel. Uh, the fact that she just doesn't oh that too. Up. But I mean, I meant like oh, in season yeah. one, like stepping on gravel. Oh, like, that oh, was yeah, like yeah. pretty cool. And um, uh, I thought it was like probably like one of the more memorable character introductions I've seen in a while. Reminded me a lot of Satsuki from yeah, Kill a sure. Kill for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, Step on My Mommy is like the same vibe. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, exactly. And um, but yeah, kind of lame. I mean, that's just kind of the problem, I guess, with this show is just the amount of characters they have, and then yeah. sometimes they're like, "Hey, we're gonna forget about you for thirty episodes." So. Yeah, that's uh, that's probably one of the yeah. bigger problems that I had is like Hibana like shows up I think like three times throughout season two and she just doesn't do anything the whole time. She's like, I'm a researcher, and I'm like, oh, we should we should we should see that because I don't think I've seen her research <laughs> a single thing throughout the entire. Because yeah, Victor <laughs> kind of just like takes that um, role from her, and I think it would have made more yeah, sense exactly. to have her fill Victor's shoes. Yeah. yeah. Um. Let's see, and she had a tie to Hijima as well. Because, like, the big thing yeah, with exactly. Victor at yeah, the end like, was, like, yeah, oh, he needed to bring her in for Hajima research, and she could have literally done that. Yeah. I guess the tie to Joker, but, like, they can... That doesn't need to be there. She's, like, the main... The biggest character that... Like, she's such a... She's, like, a pretty important character. I, I don't know about important. She's a pretty main character, I guess. And the fact that she doesn't show up is, like, a bit more heinous than other characters, like Benny Maru, who... He like does his own thing, so it like makes sense that he doesn't show up. He doesn't want to be involved. And same thing with Joker. He's like doing his own thing, so it makes show makes sense that he doesn't show up. But like when she says like I'm gonna ally with the the eighth and like help you guys out and like help you with your research and go against Hygiene and stuff, like I'm expecting her to show up a lot more and not just be like sitting around the office. Um, God, know. there's so many characters. Yeah, there's so many she's... characters. Like, uh, I mean, it makes sense, but uh, God, I wish they would just integrated yeah. them better well i i i mean yeah I, I do agree that like i wish that like she had shown up more and like done more stuff but at least like we did get like a very like full arc with her introduction you know like we like got like a full flashback and like we got her whole backstory and everything um between like her and like um iris and everything so i like appreciate that at least like better than um better than tamaki who like doesn't really like didn't really get anything until um, and I feel like it's honestly kind of worse for like Tamaki because like she like I would I would rather have a character who's like overdeveloped at their introduction and then like doesn't show up as much like um, Hibana that rather than like a character who like doesn't get a lot of development like throughout the entire time and they do have a lot of screen time yeah you know so yeah. I kind of feel like Hibana is like better than I mean obviously ideally you have like you have a lot of screen time for characters that get a lot of development like that's just the ideal um so yeah but i i like i agree that like hibana like kind of they like set you up that she was going to be a, a more important character than she actually ended up being because we got that whole like flashback and yeah, because of like her like talking about being 
an ally of of uh, like the what is it sector eight division eight I forget what the the term is but um, yeah so um, uh, not not as bad as Tamaki but yeah like still still a problem I'm one saying. character a that, bit of that I really really did like the development for was like the forming of a uh, section eight with like Obi in Hinawa. That was probably oh, yeah. like my favorite yeah, piece really of good. development for a character in the whole show. Like how Hinawa was in the army, and then you know his his best bud like um, turned into an infernal in front of him, and then like he couldn't like the gun that was like baptized, and he's like, well, if I had to be shot by a gun, wouldn't you rather be shot by one that's baptized? And he like couldn't pull the trigger, and right after that, he meets Obi, who you know is is a guy um, who you know is strongly motivated and shows that to Hinawa when they kind of take matters into their own hands to go help a woman whose husband was turned into an infernal that was directly neglected by the fire force because they had some weird point system and that infernal in particular didn't matter as much as another infernal and then that like sparks section eight right there and i don't know i think that uh obi and hinawa yeah. although they're the most the more like underpowered people of section eight i really do think that they fill their roles really mm -hmm. well especially obi like he's so cool Dude, when he's Obi so, pops he doesn't off, have any powers so and he's hype. so strong. Yeah, it, it, yeah, that's what that's what makes it the best is because like everything that he achieves is just from his own hard work. Um, and like you he's always like, I work out every day. And his English <laughs> yeah. voice actor sounds like what such a Chad, bro. Oh my god. Yeah, dude, his <laughs> English voice actor. I I compared uh a couple of them with Kyle like a week ago, and like his English voice actor's got like a deeper voice than the Japanese voice actor. Sounds so cool. <laughs> Shinra. Yeah, it'll be sick. Shinra, um, Section 8 needs you now. <laughs> yeah. Um, another character, if we're talking about development, uh, another character that I didn't think that I was going to like, but I ended up liking a lot, and I really liked his journey, was uh, Victor Leaked. His fucking, like, I thought he was just going to be like the weaselly, like, oh, I'm working for you guys, but I'm not really actually working for you guys. Uh, oh, no, I messed up another mission. Oh, God, what are we going to do? I'm not sabotaging you from the inside or anything. But, like, he's, like, actually just, like, uh, I'm just curious. I want to know the truth about the world. If I work for you, I work for you. If I don't, then uh, that's because I want to know the truth about the world. And meanwhile, he's, like, he, like, has some pretty great moments. Like, when they're, uh, they're in the testing facility. He had a really funny line where he's just, like, they like sabotage the fight and Shinra's fighting the smoke guy and one of the scientists tries to like put down leaked and leaked just like <laughs> fucking punches him he goes sorry couldn't have another <laughs> <Yeah, that's funny. laughs> and like i don't know he just grows into such a, such a great character and, like it feels like he's part of a team which i did not and he gives pretty cool insight yeah, as well really um like with the fight with show yeah and it like with the show i don't know how legit yeah. any of that was but it was it was pretty cool and then the uh when they were in the nether the second time and he was explaining um how like demolitions on buildings is is taken out and how they have a similar infrastructure for that that was that was pretty yeah. cool because i kind of like learned something right there i was like okay that's cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it makes sense that he knows it because like he's a smart dude like it's like a lot of the times you have people explaining things in fights for anime and like him being the one to explain it like it makes sense because he's the smartest motherfucker yeah yeah i would say that like th that um I, I do think that uh, sometimes the fights lean a little too hard on like the oh someone's just going to be explaining what's happening like that's going on thing um but a lot of the times like the fights make up for it with their like killer animation so, and there's some cool strategy in there too. Yeah, it's honestly pretty well choreographed, like good strategy. Yeah, a little explainy sometimes, but overall the fight scenes are like some of my favorite parts of the show. Yeah, I think the pacing of the fight scenes is where they really shine. Like it never feels like a fight is dragging on too long or a fight is too short, I don't think. I feel like maybe the um, one time I felt that was when they went to oh geez, what's the reactor called? Uh yeah, uh, so when they went to the original yeah. Amaterasu and like Shinra was fighting the Infernal there, uh, that kind of dragged on for a while. That was probably like the one arc that I was just kind of like, yeah, like the, the choreography when they finally get it done is cool. And but she is, yeah, that, that droned arc on that arc just kind of felt out of place. I think that's probably, I, I think I agree with you. It's like my least favorite arc. Like, you got like talking animals and like. <laughs> It just felt kind of weird and i don't i, I yeah and then I, in the end like <laughs> he goes into like the the hell realm and she's like i can't give you an adult link for one second 
and um yeah that was pretty cool i like the one second fucking beat that yeah was. It, it was cool yeah that was a pretty sick moment at the end when he did get the uh he, he got the verse for one second like that was that was pretty sick yeah and he's like no problem dude one second that's, that's, that's more time <laughs> than i need um yeah. i know we were to talk about victor a bit and um there's a lot of characters to, to go through so I, I think we should talk about joker um as well um his motives were pretty unclear at first he is introduced um during some fire force tests like right off the bat for all the new recruits and they run into each other shinra and joker in the middle of the test and joker seems kind of heinous at the time and he invited him in joker invited shinra to join him and um it ended up with almost like a murder attempt but i don't know if it was joker just testing him and He's kind of sprinkled throughout the show. I think you might get one or two more updates um, from him, but nothing really significant until he basically recruits Benny Maru uh, to have him assault the, uh, I, I want to say it's the Section 1, uh, like, church. It's, the, it's like the head of the, it's like just the head. I, I think it was a Section 1, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't think it was. I don't think it was one of the fire force buildings. It was okay, just like it was just church. the head, the head church. Yeah, like it was just and, like um, yeah. his character development there. Joker was also really, really solid. Uh, that's one of my favorite things yeah. about this show. Like Joker was recruited in some like elite combat force for the church and had a remarkably abusive instructor that he basically gets to encounter again on his assault and beats the fuck out of him. And. Um, was it was like, basically yeah, just him and Benny and Joker just beating the shit out of a bunch of like monk looking dudes and uh it was just really cool. And they learned a little bit more about the plot as well <laughs> and it's like I don't remember what they learned but something about uh the evangelist being involved with the the formation of soul, I think the religion was 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 it put in short words. Yeah. I think yeah. I think that fight might have been like it I it might have been my favorite fight throughout the whole thing. Like that is when Joker just fucking beats his ass and he's like singing the song that's got the joke like where he gets his name and shit and it's just it's like yeah basically I, at least everybody in here with lsd and it's yeah like, that was oh, cool shit. yeah and, then just, and it is like this trippy sequence and he's so cool and he just like cuts him into a million pieces it was, it was very cool yeah when he reveals that he was just hot boxing <laughs> the entire time everyone's like oh shit bro. and then uh, i think the guy was like counting like oh you only have a couple cards left and i think at the end of the fight he's like bro i have way more than 52 cards <laughs> he's, like, yeah. <laughs> he's like i guess the other guy doesn't know his name it's like for you to assume that it was just like just wrong from him. the start and i thought that was that was cool wait his number was 52 right is it like a as a child wasn't his number yeah right? i think so yeah yeah um but yeah that was that was cool i think that was um pretty needed in the show just to have like two of the most powerful characters just shit on some people and um i'm really glad that they included <laughs> yeah. that yeah i feel like that's important yeah. for a studio I mean, I mean, like, to have moments like that where you know like let's advance the plot a little bit but like let's just have some dudes go absolutely ballistic and we still haven't seen Betty Morrow go like full power, which is yeah. They they kind of focused on Joker a lot more for the fight, or at least that final fight. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Because it's a lot more him. personal for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I do want to talk about just like when we're talking about characters, just vil the villains in general, like the White Clad. I guess I really like the mm -hmm. White Clad as villains. Like I think I do think sometimes they can come off as a bit campy villains, but I like how each of them have their own personalities, and like some of them are really like i i really like uh fuck what's his charon oh, the, is that the, his name his yeah, yeah. The, the black guy yeah he's his his ability is super cool and he's like he's got like a pretty well-defined like set of characteristics he's like i'm gonna defend the the mm -hmm. uh adola link or the adola burst people no matter what like even if you're fighting against me but also like he will beat your ass and it's like super cool yeah. and then you've got how who's got the cool ass lightning and she's like countered by uh and their relationship her. together is so funny wait, wait, wait. Uh, just while we were talking about Charon, when he like when uh like shinra realized when he's fighting him and he realizes oh shit like the way that he works is like he um you know i i he takes my damage and he turns that into like energy um, and that's how he fights and when he realizes that he's like okay so i'm gonna have to like basically try to avoid hitting him but like how am i gonna beat him if i can't hit him <laughs> and then like while he's thinking like Charon is just like hey 
like he has like this posse and he like calls them over and they all just start <laughs> beating the shit out of him and he's like oh fuck like it didn't matter that was yeah. uh that was a pretty great moment because it's like obviously if somebody has that power they're gonna have a backup plan for, yeah. for if their opponent just stops attacking so that was good um <laughs> i really like how the white clad seemed like a good a pretty healthy mix of like pretty really strong characters and then like more cannon fodder guys like arrows arrows seem like kind of strong but then she's like kind of fallen down a bit charon like seems like he might be kind of falling down a bit just because you have like really strong people um mm -hmm. Haumea just seems like pretty damn strong and then uh, the did you talk about the pink haired girl we don't really know that much about her pow power yet which i kind of like kind of an unknown yeah she, you're talking about yeah. the she's one of the players. uh yeah one of the new pillars yeah yeah well if I'm you're like, i feel like the pillars are all yeah. very powerful like they yeah have, or, they, or they have the the potential are, to be very powerful uh, yeah. Something I really liked about her was like, like all the time you're gonna be like, if like if you're ever in like, it's not like a super common trope or anything, but like whenever you're in the situation where there's like a select number of candidates for this thing, like the group that's the good group that's pursuing these candidates and the bad group that's pursuing these candidates, like it's usually the good group that that pursues them, and like in this, like both groups are pursuing these pillars, and the what i liked is like it's so unusual for the character to just be like no i think i think i'm a bad guy and like they yeah. go with the, the the bad people and she's like i'm like not a good person and well, she doesn't say that but she like yeah finds joy she's in like an adrenaline junkie shit. like that's like a pretty yeah she like that's like a pretty unique take and like she willfully joins the bad people like of her own volition it's pretty cool yeah i like uh, that too yeah. it really like it, it did a lot to like you know we we had been introduced to her like an episode before or whatever, but I feel like at that point I was like, okay, like I get this character now, like I understand like what. Yeah, and it wouldn't make sense up. for her to join the good yeah. guys. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, Sharon and then uh, his uh, pillar, um, the woman with the uh, the crown on her over her eyes, I mean, Hamea. Hamea. I, I yeah. love the way they talk Hamea. to each other, where Sharon is just like asking like incessant yeah. questions, and then she's just like, "Shut the fuck up, or I will kill you." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he just asks like actually the stupidest questions of all time, like a dog. So funny, uh, but I like the, the um, evangelists, uh, evangelists a lot. Evangelists, I I, I can't Evangelion. say English. Uh, but I like yeah. them a lot. I think um, that they're pretty solid villains. And I like that show, like, kind of got converted for a second. And then, you know, the evangelist's, like, power, yeah. like, basically stopped that conversion. I think it really, like, solidified that, hey, these guys are kind of kind of dangerous. Yeah, I wanted to see more show in season two. But I understood why he wouldn't be there. Because he kind of, like, got converted for a bit. So they need to go take him back and, like, maybe brainwash him a bit more. Or, like, give him a mm -hmm. break so... Shinra's not there but also something i didn't like is that like like the entirety of season one Shin was like gotta get my brother back gotta get my brother back gotta get my brother back and like season two he like barely mentioned show yeah i, I think he understands times, though that like, like they are what's in his way of getting show after seeing the brainwashing yeah but yeah it would be nice to have some more yeah i can direct I can see that. uh you know monologue from him describing like what his thought process on it is mm -hmm. and what his plan is yeah yeah. Or, like, even just, like, you know, if he was super focused on it and, like, he got, like, like small steps towards getting him back or something. Like, he figured out where he was, like, being held or, or something. Yeah. Like, some progress was made on that. Because it does feel like we made, like, I, I, I did think that that was going to be, like, I thought that was going to be, like, an end of series thing. Was that we were going to find out that, like, his brother was still alive and that he was, like, with them. Um, so I was kind of surprised that we got that reveal at the end of season one, really. But then just, like, the fact that it got put on the back burner... I don't know it kind of it almost makes me think that like the author didn't really know how long the series was going to go and then he realized oh shit I'm like progressing towards the goal like too too quickly so I need to like <coughs> kind of put this plot on the back burner for now um, yeah so yeah not ideal uh, and then the last villain I want to talk about is uh, Giovanni I think he's a pretty fucking cool villain uh, I think he I think when I was mentioning earlier he can be a bit over the top I think Giovanni's probably the most over the top but also, like, he kind of pulls it off just because he's such such a wacky guy, you know? He's got, like, his hand thing, and yeah, he turns into, like, a bug at the end. And it's like Yeah, I like the kinda, bug part. That was cool. <laughs> that was super... And it, it kind of makes sense for his character, too. It's like he's, he's part of this scientific group, and he's, like, experimenting on himself. It's pretty cool. 
Yeah, I like how excited yeah. he I was that he had an Adola link with Shinra. He was like actually yeah. geeking out. Also, his English voice actor is really cool. <laughs> um, I guess like, yeah, yeah Arthur. I was just gonna say real quick, like Vulcan. I thought his arc was cool, but I don't really think we need to talk about him too much. His relationship with Lisa, I actually yeah. thought was really like cute. How he like got her back, um, eventually, mm -hmm. but. I mean, yeah. he's not that relevant to the plot, and neither like Lisa doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, well, Lisa was really there for like Vulcan to have a backstory, which I did like though. I I, I think that she's worth. But existing. also, this is this is a bit more meta. A Vulcan's voice actor is in, in the dub is Mordecai from Borderlands, and uh, Kibana's voice actor is Lilith from Borderlands. So we're just missing two from the original Vault Hunters from Borderlands One. So uh, get on that next next season, guys. Come on. <laughs> That's kind of cool, actually. But uh, yeah, Arthur, pretty pretty solid character. Pretty cool backstory. Also very tragic yeah. and sad. And I think it actually really translates well into his you know adult character that he kind of like retains that sense of like childlike innocence and role play kind of dilemma just uh -huh. because that's yeah. what his parents left with him that note and that kind of message and it's obviously important to him and um he's kind of like carrying on their wish even though he really hasn't come to terms with the fact that they abandoned him and i also think it's really cool that he like powers up the more motivated he is by a role play like that is so cool for like yeah. a character dynamic yeah. and with like vulcan <laughs> like inspiring yeah. him with like the the like uh, donkey head that it was like his steed and like everything like he is a very very good character one of the best in my opinion in terms of like what his power how it relates to who he is and what his background is he's so it's, exactly it's so cool yeah 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 i think like i said earlier that i think that's like one of like my favorite things about the show is like how the characters like powers are all really unique even though they're just like fire but then also that they're like pretty related to their personalities as well. Um, I, yeah. I appreciate that a lot. I def I definitely think Arthur is my favorite character just because I think he's a really really good balance of like like when he needs to be serious he could be serious but like at the same time like when he's serious he's role playing which is like by itself not serious. I mean I guess it yeah. can be serious but like it's a bit silly like that's how he gets powered up. But so like his his comedic relief is fucking hilarious. Like that entire sequence when they're in the Hajima fight and he's like with Vulcan and he's like, wait a second, but like the stories are about people pulling swords out of stone, so why do you want me to put the sword <laughs> in the stone? Also, this isn't yeah. a stone, this is a moving vehicle. He's like, uh uh, actually the stone is a giant snake, and it's like, what the fuck? And it's like, I don't know, it's just like this wacky hijinks and like also he has these badass moments and like I, I really like uh, him Him and Shinra's, like, relationship where they're constantly just fucking competing with each other and they, like, low-key hate each other. But, like, when shit hits the fan, they're, they're, they're uh, ride or die. Like, it's, it's great. Yeah, I think um, Arthur's probably up there for one of my favorite characters, personally. <clears throat> um, his power is also really cool, like a plasma sword. That is, I wish they'd honestly showcase his ability more, and I wish they'd show him like powering up off roleplay more because that's literally like one of my favorite moments in any fight is if they find like a funny way to like power up Arthur and then he just has a moment. I think that's uh, definitely a highlight for me. I kind of think that like one of the reasons that like we don't get more like art, like just Arthur fights is just because I feel like like swords are like they don't really like by themselves really lend themselves to like super interesting fights just because like that's not like a unique power that can be used in like weird ways it's just a sword you know but like that's why i appreciate that like arthur has like this like other element to his fights that like he needs to like think that he's a he's a knight he needs to like be doing his like knight role play yeah. and then like that is like what in what where like the you know like the a lot of times like his fights are like more comedic um where like the comedy element comes in and like makes me appreciate that I'm like watching an Arthur fight. So, yeah. Or he but I feel like a... that's why we don't get like a ton of Arthur fights is because it's hard to write like good sword fights just because they're kind of, you know, you just cut people and then they yeah. either hit, get he hit or some they of the uh, best writing as um, well. I remember there's that one scene where he's like, I'm a samurai knight. 
Oh no! I think he said I'm yeah. a night samurai, and he's like, "Oh, well, that makes me sound too much yeah. like I'm a samurai." So I'm a samurai knight now, and I had like the first. I had like this big like freeze frame with him like posing, and then I had another one with instead of knight samurai, samurai knight. And uh, honestly, I feel like the writers yeah, really they... understand that character and, and do a great job like showing that personality. And then later on, and like I think it's like at the very end of season two, he's like, "I'm a knight samurai," and Shinra's like, "Don't you think that was like too much samurai before?" He's like, "Nah, I'm a samurai." Now. <laughs> oh god, yeah, it's pretty it's funny. Pretty um, yeah, uh, I wish I had more to say about Arthur, but honestly, Shinra kind of steals the spotlight from him a lot of the time. Uh, that's probably my biggest complaint. Yeah, he's the main character. Uh, so yeah, I, I kind of wish it was Arthur sometimes, you know. <laughs> Oh, I think I, I I I never really had a problem with Shinra stealing the spotlight just because Shinra's a pretty he is he is character. like yeah Shinra's I think that, so yeah. cool. maybe just a little bit more Arthur though. Plus, I, I think that he's a good main character. Like he's he'd be, he's a better main character than Arthur because like he's a lot more like goal driven. You know, like he he is like he really wants to like find yeah. his brother and like you know save him from like the predicament that he's in and like find out like what really happened on that day. So I like that like he's the main character because he's got. He's got goals. He um, has, like, but also, a funny, uh, about Arthur funny, story. um, excuse me? Yeah. But also, like, it's it's that classic dilemma where, like, you say, oh, I want more of this funny character, and then you're not getting it in moderation anymore, and if they're hitting you over the head with the same roleplay joke every single episode, constantly, 24 minutes out of 24 minutes of the episode, then it's not going to be as funny anymore. So you want Arthur in moderation, and if he was the main character, I think he would be a lot less funny. I think Shinra playing the well. Shinra is not really a straight man to his his funniness because Shinra kind of joins in on it sometimes. But uh, and Shinra is like goofy and of himself. But like I feel like Shinra is playing that straight man to Arthur's funny man, and having Arthur in moderation really helps. Speak for yourself, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I didn't realize you're such a fucking no. Arthur sim. Jesus. <laughs> I pull on your chain, but uh, I guess we could talk about. Uh, I guess the main characters, we should probably just talk about those. Iris and Maki. Uh, let's talk about Iris. I feel like Iris is easy to talk about. Um, I think Iris is important to be in the show. Just because she gives the perspective of somebody who actually practices soul. Um, and then simultaneously gets to kind of see the whole religion unravel. And then watching her, like, cope with that. And then her backstory with Hibana, um, was pretty touching. Uh, she's not, like, a cool character, but I think she's necessary, and like I'm glad she's in the show. But I don't know. I feel like a lot of the other characters kind of take the spotlight from her, and and for the better. I think she, I think the amount of time she's on screen is is appropriate. But she doesn't really stand out to me as as anything I especially look forward to. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I feel like she's kind of she's one of the weaker characters for sure, just because like she like barely ever does anything and um, just prayers. Yeah, That's about it. Yeah. yeah, she's like a pretty low key character, I'd say. Like, she's kind of just there. She's I don't know. I like her. Like, she's not a dislikable character. But if like if if five is completely neutral towards somebody and like one is hating them, she's like a six. Like I I like her, but like she's just just okay. Yeah, I wish I had more to say about her, but she just doesn't do enough for me to really exactly sway to yeah. loving her or hating her because. There's not enough to really go off of. Um, but I do want to talk about Maki yeah. because I think Maki is a pretty cool character. Um, she has some really funny moments when people like slightly mention that she might be a little bit muscular and she's like, how dare you call me like a, a Cyclops gorilla or whatever she says. That actually <laughs> always makes me laugh. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> and um, her backstory with her father and her brother towards the end of season two, we could have used that development a little bit earlier, but we did get a touch of development yeah. when, like, you know, it was introduced, okay, she's from the army and she has connections to the military. So it's not like they left her completely in the dark, but they probably should have pressed that development a little bit earlier to fully flesh it out. But regardless, I do like Maki's personality. I think her power assisted with Vulcan is really cool. And, um, you know, what she did with uh, Victor at the end was cool with her brother as well. Uh, they like, all worked together to uh, divert the fire. Yeah. I think Maki is, like, she, when I, um, 
like when when she was introduced i was like oh like i i like maki like she's kind of like a um you know she's like a badass she's also like a girl so like she doesn't like to be like acknowledged as like being like super manly or like muscular even though she's like a muscle girl um but i do think that like when i was you know when i was first watching i was kind of like damn i wish she like did more because for like the first like season she like barely did anything she was just sort of like that like character like she just like was she just had that personality but like she wasn't really she didn't really have a lot of like fights or screen time or anything but i feel like that was like as you said kind of like um a better thing in season in season two maki definitely had more moments to shine where we like learned about her like backstory with her family and she like does have like one fight at the end of season one and like she starts to get more fights in season two so um yeah, yeah i would say that like maki was like like i yeah she's definitely a character that like i i uh i came around on like and i think that she has like Oh, Kyle died. He says, I think that she has, like, uh, nice. huge knockers. That's, um, that's fact. Um, Can't take that back. Uh, <laughs> Kyle, you're, oh, you're cutting that. All right. I'm um, back, sorry. I think you're good. Okay, well, Maki's good. That's basically what I was saying. Yeah. Maki, Maki good. good. Uh, yeah. I really liked her whole, her whole arc in Season 2 with the military. Um, I liked her backstory with Hinoa. That was pretty like they like mention it when they have Hinoa's backstory. He's like, yeah, this person would make a good member of the Fire Force, and like get to see that develop in season two as, as well. And like also a side note, I like how this is like the mil the mi the military guy. That's I think it's section two. It's the military one. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, that guy looks like he's gonna be a you know a nefarious evil villain, and then he just like shows up and like helps them out. And it's like, oh. Okay, and like they do yeah. that for some other characters, which is kind of cool. Like, they're not like, they're not like just kind of impeding them or whatever. Like Hubana was when she first met them or whatever. I thought they were all gonna be like nefarious fire force leaders, and then a lot of them just weren't. Um, but yeah, back to Maki. I thought her backstory with the military and like her family's like fight to, her, I guess it's mainly her brother and her father, like to try to get her out of the fire force because like that's not what she should be doing. She should be in the military and doing secretarial work i thought it was like it's 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 a pretty good uh pretty good internal struggle for her that she's like balancing her family with her work and um i thought it like the culmination of it with like her and her brother helping to defeat or like save them from the uh explosion in the nether was pretty cool yeah and like the the conflict with their family definitely just like makes sense with like just like the concept of her character that she's like yeah, a girl exactly. but she's also a badass so um, I, I thought it was pretty yeah, jarring just, though um it just like threw me off like right before victor um maki's brother and maki like you know we're about to work together to basically diffuse the fire into earth to cool it down and then her brother was like you can't help you're a girl and i don't know how that translated yeah. into the sub but i was like what the f <laughs> what did you just say <laughs> like what <laughs> I, I uh, he did he definitely did not say that in, in the I, and I, I, I was I just watched, like but, that's bizarre. I mean I I, did, I I kind of agree that like the the conflict was a little like surface level you know like yeah. they're just like oh like she's a girl so yeah, she's like this is fine. not this is even yeah. further in the future I mean I guess society might have regressed a little bit but I think the concept that women can do <laughs> jobs that men can do is is not that you know crazy or unbelievable yeah. and um. I don't know. That, that that threw me off. So maybe it must have been better in the sub there. Maybe it might be a translation error. But uh, besides that, yeah, the, 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 the conflict wasn't super deep. But in essence, you know, like having like a, a family issue with like the dad wanting to pull her into the military and having a comfy job just to keep her safe, I thought was more compelling than you can't do this because you're a girl. I wish the dad and the brother would have been yeah. more on the same track there. Like, oh, I just want to keep you safe. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it would have made more sense yeah. if they would have had like another sibling that died like in the military or something. I, I don't know. It just seemed kind of bizarre a little bit, but I still like Maki. Yeah. I kind of just feel like in general this show like Maki is like by far like the the best like female character that in the like she actually like does shit. I feel like most of the other female characters kind of get sidelined for the majority of the show. So I feel like that's kind of just like a problem that the show has is that they're like the, I mean there, I guess there are more like um women that's villains true. that like actually do things. Yeah, I was just saying like, so like, the women villains are like pretty kick ass. Like how Maya is yeah. like a fucking what the terrible. fuck? Yeah, 
it's it's weird. That's I don't know if yeah, I like I that. Know. Like I would. <laughs> That's kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, I would just like like I would just like it if like as we said before, if like Tamaki was like an actual character, um, like more like you know Maki, like not not necessarily the same personality or whatever, but like in terms of like uh, how she's presented and like how competent she's she is and like you know her role in the narrative because Maki definitely is like I would say like pretty much like the only like actually like the only female character that's like a protagonist that gets to actually do things yeah, yeah. kind of a a weak point for sure and um you know, talking about it out yeah. loud i just realized how crazy that is because across the board there's not very many potent um non-evil females in the show uh i guess benny maru has like the yeah. two daughters which are pretty rambunctious but they don't really like have like a, a big plot yeah. but you know they're, they're but they're like I know, but they're strong willed and like they're competent, I guess, which is more so than Tamaki yeah. or Iris. Yeah, that's true. I, th- I thought that I thought they're kind of a side note. They're when they were doing like the shapeshifters in the in the area, and she like immediately knew that that was not her twin, and like that's an old yeah. man my, as my twin. I thought oh, that was yeah. a <laughs> hilarious moment. Yeah, I guess do we explicitly talk about oh, Betty Maru? Been- I know we talked about him, and uh, I'd like to not really. Him. Like he's 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 cool. Yeah, he's I, cool. I, I like the village him. they come from yeah. is really cool. Like how like crazy shit. I mean, it's just generally really like. I was just gonna say like how crazy shit like happens there all the time, and they like make a festival out of it, and how Benny Maru and um, yeah, oh <laughs> uh, what's his buddy's name? Something with this Conro. Um, Thank you. Uh, they're like a pretty cool duo, and like their backstory is really sick. Um, how he like protected Benny Maru and Benny Maru is kind of carrying on the torch. I, I, I like everything about them. They're really cool allies. Yeah, and I just also really love like when we we're first introduced to like them and like um, the Seventh Division. I, I just love how much character like that like part of the city has. That like they're it's basically like the traditional Japanese area, um, and just like how much of like a contrast it is with like the rest of the setting. Um, and yeah, so I, I really enjoyed like just kind of like whenever we go back there, I always enjoyed it because there's just like a lot of like a lot of a lot of fun characters there, and just like the fact that everyone it, it just feels like a, like a community. I appreciate. It. Yeah, I definitely think that area like was is it Asakusa? Yeah, that it's, sounds like, right. Really flushed out and like it has yeah. a very well defined personality to it, which I like a lot, and mm-hmm. it, it like matches up with the whole dynamic between Conro and uh, Benimaru. I, I, I'm excited to see more of Conroe like in the future because we get to see him uh, at the end of season two do his super crazy sword move and like that ends up helping with Arthur and Shinra's training. So I'm hoping we get to see more of him because like it seems like before the whole incident where he ended up getting uh, the necrosis stuff, I can't remember what they called it, but uh, it seemed like he was pretty fucking strong, so I'm hoping we t- we get to see more either of his backstory or like maybe like something that develops with him and like um, maybe he they find a cure for that whole thing and he gets to return to his former strength. But yeah, him and him and Benny Maru and that whole area of Asakusa is definitely a standout for me. It's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, I'm always yeah, very interested when that. they go back there, and plus it means like it's training arc time now apparently, and it's just like that's like <laughs> exactly. Time. I love that shit. Yeah. Just make the entire show a training arc. Yeah. Literally this. <laughs> Should we just talk about like the plot as a whole? Um I think it was I think you guys mentioned it earlier. I think it was like it's it's a solid plot. It's not anything like super crazy and it like keeps mm-hmm. me interested and it serves its purpose. Um but yeah, like it it doesn't go like it doesn't do anything super super yeah. in depth, I guess. Um and like i don't think i don't i don't think i'd call it predictable or anything but it's it's a solid plot it serves a purpose yeah it's like i feel like out of all of like the like meta aspects that we've talked about so far like the visuals like the characters the plot i feel like the plot is like probably the weakest part i'm definitely a lot more like when i think about the things that i like about this show it's like the characters like their attitudes and personalities and like just the aesthetic and style of the um both like the the animation, the character designs, and like the the setting and premise. Um, so I feel like the plot is like definitely the the weakest, like one of the weaker elements of the show. 
but at the same time, the other elements are strong enough that I don't really care. Um, I, I do like the, I, I, one thing that I like, I was interested in at the beginning that I kind of feel like was sidelined later, um, is they, they kind of set it up. Like when we, when we have like the Hibana arc, we kind of, I, I was under the impression that we were going to do more and, and they like introduce like, um, the, the eighth as like, kind of like the internal affairs of the fire force. I was under the impression that we were going to kind of like do more like one by one, like investigating all of like the different, um, like the different divisions of the fire force and like, kind of like gathering information that way. Um, but it turns out like the conflict ends up being more like external, like focusing on like the, um, the white clad, which I think as we talked about, like they're like, they're decent villains and stuff. Um, and they have like a lot of personality, but, um, I don't know. I kind of like, I, I was like enjoying the, like us versus everyone else in the fire force that was set up but that doesn't really end up being the case because they end up like actually kind of finding more allies in the fire force than um than enemies that is a really good point um because it's hard for me to keep in my mind like all of the different divisions of the fire force and like who's in them and like you know what is that particular division about we get a little bit about it like we know what the fifth does like i know what the first does um uh -huh. and uh -huh. uh i know uh the, the the seventh you know with benny maru but there's a couple in there that i'm pretty yeah. fuzzy on and i think to more formally introduce all of those divisions like they could have totally done that like make that season one and then and then season two yeah. like let's focus on the evangelists and show there was no reason to rush that so that is a really good point i did not even think about that but i agree with you that i was really interested in seeing the whole landscape of the like you know the fire force and and you know the politics behind it and and where everyone is standing and what everyone's allegiances yeah. are because now they're like going back and like oh this guy's from the third and this guy's from here oh and this guy died who's like a masochist yeah. that you met like twice before and it's like okay um i just don't care as much because i don't think it was set up as well as they intended to and I agree with you 100%. And I think that the plot is as good as it needs to be. Uh, I, I think that there's some nice details here and there. I think the other, like, uh, dimension, like the hell dimension is cool. I'm excited to learn more about that. And um, I think the conflict between the evangelists and, like, the fire force is, like, fine. Like, it's not that complicated. Um, yeah. And, like, a lot of this stuff has been solved already. Like, I feel like I kind of know a lot about the conflict. Uh which I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Maybe they'll reveal more information um, that... I think it's fine. I feel like a lot of I... times when shows, like, lean too hard in the mystery aspect, it's just, like, you know, especially if they, like, ask questions and then don't answer them for a really long time, they're like, they're like you're, you're kind of like, okay, well, like, are the answers really going to be, like, as satisfying as they, like, make them out to be? It's much more... Like if if the answers aren't satisfying, it's much better to have the answers be answered immediately because then you're not like you're not you're not pondering it like the entire time, you know. So I'm okay with like there not being a lot of those right. questions because yeah. like you know, the plot's pretty straightforward. So I like there was like a really good scene that I liked that kind of like made me think about like I think the evangelist is a really good kind of mystery main villain, and like that scene where they're talking about like how do you go about like counteracting and even like comprehending like fighting a being that has been interpreted by so many cultures in so many different ways as god or as like a god it's like that's like such a daunting task and it kind of puts you in perspective like what these main characters are feeling like i thought, I thought that was a really cool scene they like talked about uh it might have been when they were at the in the in china i think that might have been that but it was a really cool scene and it kind of gave me a different perspective on the plot um i think it just gave me a bit more appreciation for the evangelist as like the big bad and uh thought that was pretty cool um yeah let's see anything else oh uh music uh all the ops yeah i like the heavy metal one and uh, i think it was season one that one was yeah, sick really yeah cool. yeah it reminded so me different. of the vinland saga one yeah. he more heavy metal yeah. and anime ops please yeah, yeah. 
And also the animation and all of the OPs is really, really good. Animation is 10 out of 10 in this show. Yeah, they've really got the best looking fire of any show, which is like, you know, that's good. That's <laughs> yeah, good. definitely. <laughs> that, 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 that's like a, out, yeah. When they give out the best looking fire award at the uh, Crunchyroll Awards, like, you know, Fire yeah. is going to get it. Yeah, he's going to yeah. step up your game. Well, it could be Pro Mare. <laughs> Pro Mare came out two, two years ago, though, didn't it? Well, when did the first season of this come out? I, I think 2019, out. and then the last one came out 2020 this summer, I think. Damn. All right. Well, hopefully we think, hopefully uh, we get another think, season this year. What's the uh the talking fire from Hal's called? Oh, he, um, he was, the, he was the first recipient of the award. Calcifer. Yeah, Calcifer. He's he got the first award. Yeah. Nice. Uh, -huh. <laughs> uh other than that, the music was kind of. I don't know. Didn't really yeah. stand out to me. It served its purpose. I it, it never really had like hype music or ambient music that really. One one part of the audio design that I did notice, um, when Chino was like having like realizations and like tense moments, it played like kind of like a fire truck sound. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever realized that, but I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it's like yeah, a foghorn yeah, yeah. kind of like. But it, it was like when he was having like the yeah. links when he was having yeah, to have, yeah, yeah. like the links. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he would like look down his at his feet, and there'd be like rib cages there. And it's, like, <laughs> weird. There was like I think it might have been only season one. But like, whenever it, I think it might have been the links or something else, but it was like, like the bass boosted sounds that you get, you hear in like memes and shit. It's just like, it kind of took me out of it for a bit because it was just like the classic, like fucking turn your bass up to eleven type of shit. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Um, do we just want to move straight into reviews then, or I guess, um, I guess we we'll call them reviews. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. Anyone would like to go first? Um, I can start. Uh, yeah, I mean, as as we were saying, you know, I feel like I, 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 what I really appreciate about the show is I feel like it has a lot of personality. There's a lot of personality in the characters. There's a lot of personality in like the aesthetic and the like. The premise is pretty unique and um, is like interesting, and um, the setting has a lot of personality. If I didn't already say that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and the the animation's great for some of the fights. Looks look fucking spectacular. Um, and yeah, I mean, some of the elements aren't as good. Like the the plot is like not anything super original. The um, you know, like as we said, like there some of the characters are weaker than others. Mostly like the uh, the girl characters. Um, and uh, so yeah, I mean, it's like definitely a good shonen because. It's got it's got it checks a lot of like the good boxes and it has a lot of personality so um probably give this like a probably give this like a seven um yeah i like all, a lot of the characters i wish a lot of them were fleshed out a bit more and maybe not not as not as hung out to dry like we see like I, we mentioned with hibana um uh i like the setting quite a bit like you said it's got style to it um I like the plot enough, but it like it it's it's not anything super special. Um, I'd probably give this probably give it like an eight. I don't know. It's, it's a pretty it's like a, it's a fun watch for me at least, um, and that might put it up a bit above. I actually I'll go down to seven point five because I think the plot's pretty important. It's not it's a pretty plot heavy show, and when the plot's not as not as uh, not as impressive, I guess, then that kind of brings it down. Just because it is a plot-centric show, whereas other shows might be more character-driven. Well, the characters mm -hmm. do drive it, but yeah, that's a 7.5. Um, uh, I'm still thinking about my score, so I'll, I'll reveal it at the end, but I don't know. I feel like this show just lacks in like planning and uh, a more just a stronger focus for every arc that you know really kind of fleshes out the world into what feels like a complete tokyo empire um i feel like within the fire force there's just some missing pieces that i feel like after 50 episodes you should know and i feel like some of the characters uh i think i think all the characters that are developed are strong i i think it might be at the wrong time um too late or 
some cases too early and then the character is kind of left by the wayside so um you know just just general um pacing with with the plot design and, and the character developments and integrating them into that plot design i think is just generally weak and that's all that's what we talked about but um it's it's kind of what stands out the most for me i i, I feel like there wasn't enough structure and, and thought into this is the world we got to develop bring it up and then let's hyper focus on this this plot line within it and um you know that being said there's still a lot of really really strong points of of the show the, the art is like crazy good like it's insane how good this show looks and um like comparable to demon slayer like i said and um the character development although i think misplaced a lot of the time i think is still really really good like absurdly good sometimes um just wish they would integrate it a little bit better and you know the fights are awesome as well and if the fights weren't so good, I, I could see myself losing interest in the show. But because the fights and the animation and the style, um, the styling of the characters is insane as well. And we never even talked about this when we were doing the analysis, but I want to bring it up. But that one guy who had like the black smoke um, and he was like abusing one of the pillars, I thought his whole character arc was like crazy. And like they just threw in that character for a couple episodes and they made him so convincing and you know he kind of like flipped from like a terrible person to like just like a not good person <laughs> uh and uh i mean just like the ability to do that um and they be care about all characters involved with somebody they introduced so quickly i think kind of speaks to the strengths of the show and that i do care a lot about the characters so i'd probably give it a 7.5 as well maybe an eight um down the line um but you know there's still a lot more anime left but i, I give it a 7.5 where it's at right now um yeah uh, i think that is it for us unless you guys have any other thoughts or opinions or anime soiree analysis uh Not i was really. thinking we could just think... say oh go ahead Kyle. no i was just gonna say i think i'm good oh i was gonna say uh it might be good to just, uh, at like the very end, would you recommend watch somebody watch the show? And I would definitely. Oh yeah, I'm down. Somebody watch yeah. Show. yeah, um, yeah, I would definitely recommend this to any fan of like, if you if you've seen a bunch of shonen and you know that you like shonen, uh, this is definitely one of the better ones. So I would recommend it. Yeah, I agree with yeah. that entirely. Um, other than that, right? Especially for people in particular that are like, uh, particularly swayed by like the aesthetic because that is um something that i really enjoyed and i, I that that's like one of the reasons you done <laughs> i'm just kidding. i'm done <laughs> <laughs> we like to keep it crazy here in anime soiree <laughs> we joke here anyway um i think that's it and follow us on twitch i swear to anime again i know i did it last week that we'll get the new twitch up i've just been uh busy watching uh, My Hero Academia and this show, and because we have a, a pretty, it's a pretty uh, episode intense reviews coming up this month, and I'm just trying to make sure I don't uh, miss the deadlines. Anyway, um, well, it'll it'll be changed to Anime Soiree next weekend, I promise. Follow us on Twitter, Spotify, YouTube. It's a promise, promise. to anime. No promise. And uh, <laughs> I think that's it. I think we're done. Um, sign it off. All right. Bye.